Hi everybody and happy Breast Cancer Awareness Month. You know that breast cancer means an awful lot to our family and we hope that you've had a wonderful month. We are so excited about our very first Confessions of an Educator. We are creating this platform to give educators and a chance to ask us anything you want to know, any advice that you need about any situations that you're having at your school or in your, even in your lives. We want to be able to offer you valid advice Things from, I, I have almost 30 years of experience in education. I was a teacher of fourth grade and seventh grade. I was a counselor, an assistant principal, a principal, and now I'm, I'm a district office administrator uh, over federal programs. So Tasha's not able to be here today, but I am so excited to have my son-in-law, Casey Bethel, who's also a teacher heart out uh, speaker. So I'm gonna read our very first question, dear, Confessions of an educator, I am new to my grade level and we've had a lot of turnover. No one really wants to take the leadership role, yet it was assigned to me. I am not really sure I can do it and every time I try to put something in place, my teammates don't show up or don't give it a great effort. I am not sure what I should do. Should I just keep to myself or should I try to be more authoritative? I don't want to be a boss, but neither does anyone else. So I'm gonna let Casey tell you guys what he thinks and then I'll come back and make some remarks. Hi everybody, I'm Casey Bethel. I have 15 years of experience in education. I taught high school science for 15 years. I was a teacher leader at two schools. I've been a department chair. I've been a grade level uh, team leader. Um, I have been a state teacher of the year, a uh, teacher representative for our state. And now I am a district level administrator, but I'm gonna speak as a teacher. First of all, uh, congratulations to you. How exciting and how validating it must be that your principal sees that in you and, and you have been given that responsibility. That's something that you should, you should celebrate and you should be really, really happy about. That means a lot and it meant a lot to me when people saw that in me. But I also know what it feels like to be a teacher leader and not have enough people to follow you. So step one uh, is that no, you should not keep to yourself. You need to be the teacher leader that you've been tapped to be. Your school needs it. No doubt being a teacher leader requires a whole lot of courage though. So you gotta be courageous and you've got to be authoritative. But the best type of courage to have as a teacher leader is one that focuses the attention on students. I noticed that you didn't mention students in your question, which makes me worry that maybe the needs of the students are going unmentioned in your school culture. What you can do is be authoritative in the way that you press your colleagues to do what's right for the kids they serve. Every teacher I know got into teaching because they love kids and they want to see kids get what they need, although that goes forgotten sometimes. Remind them of that. You can say, hey, guys, I need you all to be at the next meeting and I need you all to bring your data and be prepared to discuss the data because right now our kids aren't getting the services they need and we can do we can give kids um, everything they need to be successful. Show them the ways that kids aren't being served and how their decisions are affecting kids and then show them how the, the suggestions you're making are gonna help kids get what they need. It's all about students, every type of teacher leadership. What do you think as an administrator? From an administra administrative perspective, I think that um, first of all, if you are having lots and lots of turnover, every single year, then that means that, number one, you need to really do some self-reflection because that, that's so important in education. Um, and you need to see, am I being a support to my teachers? Am I giving my teachers what they need? Am I being a resource to them? Because if you are doing all those things, then you won't have people leaving. Attrition is very important in education. And when you have a high level of people leaving every single year, that means that every single year you have to retrain uh, and regroup. So that that's not actually not a good thing for the kids. So what I would say is that you need to review the procedures that you've set in place at the school. And then also identifying and also like when you become a team leader, you still need the assistance of your administrator to guide you, to be a role model for you. So hopefully the principal is doing that. And if he or she is not doing that, then as someone who is a team leader, go to the principal and say, hey, these are things that I need. 
I, I really, I'm, I really don't know what I'm doing. So is there a way for you to help me to be a better team leader? And hopefully the principal also has identified those teacher leaders in the school who can help him or her. Because being a principal, guys, when you're a principal, please remember the hardest thing about, one of the hardest things about being a principal is managing adults because everyone has their own way of looking at things. They have their own way of thinking about things, but the principal has to look at the big picture in everything that he or she does. So hopefully the principal can identify that group of core group of teacher leaders who can help him or her to have the school run in a, a more efficient and effective way. So we hope you guys have enjoyed our very first Confessions of an Educator. Please send us in your issues to therightstuffchicks at gmail.com. And please know that we will keep your names, of course, confidential. And we look forward to hearing your issues. We look forward to um, being able to give you some honest and raw feedback. And remember to always be the teacher that you would want for your own child. Have a wonderful day. If you liked our video, please hit subscribe.